Concurrent delay. In this lecture, we're going to focus on some advanced contractual issues related to concurrent delay. But let's start with an introduction. Concurrent delay may be said to occur when two or more critical delay events, one a contractor culpable event and the other an employer culpable event, occur at the same time and their effects are felt at the same time. As far as liability is concerned, the view taken by English law towards concurrent delay may be summarized as follows. Where employer risk events and contractor risk events occur sequentially but have concurrent effects, any contractor delay should not reduce the extension of time to which the contractor is entitled to as a result of the employer delay. This is called the Malmaison approach based on the decision in Henry Boot Construction versus Malmaison Hotel. And this approach was also confirmed in Walter Lilly versus Mackey. Now let's look at some advanced issues related to concurrent delay. Exclusion by contract and repercussions. Does prevention principle apply? The prevention principle arises where an act or remission by the employer prevents the contractor from complying with its obligation to complete the works by the completion date. If this act of prevention causes critical delay to the works and there is no mechanism in the contract for the time for completion to be extended or such mechanism is ineffective or inoperable, time is rendered at large. In this scenario, the contractor must complete the works within a reasonable time and the employer cannot levy liquidated damages for delay. Lord Denning expressed the principle with characteristic clarity in Trollope and Coles Limited versus North West Metropolitan Regional Hospital Board when he said, it is well settled that in building contracts and in other contracts too, when there's a stipulation for work to be done in a limited time, if the other party buys conduct, it may be quite legitimate conduct, such as ordering extra work, renders it impossible or impracticable for the other party to do his work within the stipulated time, then the one whose conduct causes the trouble can no longer insist upon strict adherence to the time stated. He cannot claim any penalties or liquidated damages for non-completion in that time. In Multiplex versus Honeywell Systems, the prevention principle was comprehensively dealt with in the judgment of Jackson J. He derived the following three principles. First, actions by the employer which are perfectly legitimate under a construction contract may still be characterized as prevention if those actions cause delay beyond the contractual completion date. Second, acts of prevention by an employer do not set time at large if the contract provides for an extension of time in respect of those events. And third, insofar as the extension of time clause is ambiguous, it should be construed in favor of the contractor. The second provision is particularly important and standard forms of contract now generally provide a provision for granting an extension of time for acts of prevention by the employer or its agents, which are called compensation or delay events. In North Midland Building Limited versus Sidon Homes Limited, the English High Court considered whether a contract excluding any claim for an extension of time in respect of periods of concurrent delay caused time to be rendered at large due to the operation of the prevention principle. In the above case, the contract included an amended contractual provision, Clause 2.25, which stated that any delay caused by a relevant event which is concurrent with another delay for which the contractor is responsible shall not be taken into account. In other words, if there was concurrent delay, the contractor would not be entitled to an extension of time. There were substantial delays to the works and the contractor claimed for an extension of time. However, North Midland stated that the contractor was also responsible for part of the delays, that is, the delays were concurrent, and in accordance with Clause 2.25, the contractor was not entitled to an extension of time. The contractor argued that Clause 2.25 cannot be legally effective because making the contractor liable for concurrent delays would be contrary to the prevention principle which is not permitted under English law. The next line of argument was, as a result, there was no mechanism for the contractor to be granted an extension of time for employee delay 
so time became at large. And the final argument was, when time becomes at large, the contractor is only obliged to complete the works within a reasonable time, rather than by a specific completion date, and any liquidated damages clause becomes inoperable. The court stated that the meaning of clause 2.25.1.3b was crystal clear. There was an explicit agreement between the parties that if there was concurrent delay, the employee's delay was not to be taken into account when assessing the contractor's extension of time entitlement. The parties had agreed how the risk of concurrent delay should be allocated. Therefore, the judge said that it was not open to the parties to seek to argue otherwise. It was also held that the meaning of the clause was perfectly clear and that the prevention principle simply did not arise. The court pointed out that there was a provision in the contract for granting an extension of time for delays caused purely by the employer. As a result, the prevention principle could not come into play. At this point, I would like to make an important note. In this case, the employer's concurrent delay did not cause a further delay to the existing delay caused by the contractor. If the employer's concurrent delay resulted in an additional delay to the contractor's existing delay, the situation would be different and it could be argued that the prevention principle would apply notwithstanding the presence of clause 2.25. And finally, I've included a table which gives you an idea about how concurrent delays are dealt with in accordance with different publications and opinions. You could use this table as an excellent aid memoir to refer to while dealing with concurrent delays. Now let's look at a practical workshop in MS Project. Let's look at concurrent delay in action. So I've just applied my customized table. I'm going to insert a few activities now. Let's go with seven activities. Now it's time to link them and insert a duration for each activity. Now let's insert two delay events, one caused by the contractor and one by the employer. Let's assume a contractor delay of 10 days and an employer delay of 8 days. So let's apply the links and uh, insert the appropriate durations. Both delay events have been inserted with a finish to start relationship with activity number 5. Now let's link activities 6 and 7 with a finish to start relationship to activity number 6. Now let's have a look at the critical path. It's clear from this analysis that the client's delay is not critical, it's blue in color. The red bars indicate the critical path, so it's pretty obvious that the contractor's delay is critical. However, if we don't consider the dominant cause theory, a careful analysis of this program will show you that the employer's delay is concurrent with the contractor's delay. Now, if we make that zero, it disappears. If we make the contractor delay zero, the client delay becomes critical. So it is very important to analyze the program as a whole in order to ascertain where the concurrent delays lie. Now let's look at another example. I'm just going to copy a few activities down, create a new set of tasks. So 
since we're already in the tracking Gantt view, we can see that there's uh, two critical parts. Just inserting another project finish milestone. I've just relinked the new activity so that it's not critical anymore, but I have linked uh, activity number seven to the project finish activity. And let's assume that activity number five down below has a duration of 23 days. Now look what happens when I make the contracted delay zero. You end up with two critical parts and the client delay is clearly critical. I'll just undo that and I redo it just to show you the difference between the two. And now let us make the client delay zero along with the contracted delay. And something very interesting has happened. The critical path has changed you have a brand new critical path and it runs through the second set of activities. So this is very important to realize that a critical path can change depending on when and where the delay events occur. Concurrent delay is a massive topic and I do believe that this module has provided you with some great information about this complex issue.